Unit 8, Day 4, Trapezoids and Kites. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So this is different from the parallelograms we talked about the past two days that have two pairs of parallel sides. Trapezoids have exactly one pair. Those parallel sides are called the bases, and again, parallel lines we mark with that extra set of arrows. The two sides that are not parallel, those are called the legs. Now we have two pairs of base angles. The base angles A and B, that's a pair of base angles because they're angles that lie on the same base, AB. And then angles D and C are a pair of base angles because they also lie on the same base, CD. <clears throat> An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid whose legs are congruent. So if you have a trapezoid, one pair of parallel sides, and then those legs, the non-parallel ones, are congruent, that's what you call an isosceles trapezoid. Here are two theorems about trapezoids. A trapezoid is, an I is isosceles if and only if each pair of base angles is congruent. So those base angles we talked about, angle A and B along this base, if those are congruent and angle C and D along this base, if those are congruent, then you can say the trapezoid is isosceles. Now, here's another one. A trapezoid is isosceles if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So again, that idea of bringing in our diagonals AC and BD. If those are congruent to each other, then you have an isosceles trapezoid. Mid-segment theorem for trapezoids. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base and its length is one half the sum of the lengths of the bases. So here MN is our mid-segment and the way we know that is M is the midpoint of segment AB. It cuts it in half so that AM is congruent to MB. Likewise N is the midpoint of DC so DC gets cut in half so that DN is congruent to NC. Then you take the two midpoints and you connect them to get this mid-segment. So what the theorem tells us is that MN, this mid-segment, is parallel to AD. MN is also parallel to BC. And lastly, to find calculations for the lengths of those segments, MN is going to be equal to AD plus BC divided by 2. This is an important formula to memorize because it's not going to be on your SOL formula sheet. Let's do a little practice with trapezoids. Here we're going to match the pair of segments or angles with the term that best describes them in the trapezoid. So I want you to press pause, see if you can match them correctly, and then check back with me to see if you got it correct. Okay, so QR and PS. QR and PS, those are the two sides that are parallel. Those are called the bases. PQ and RS those are the non-parallel sides, and those are called the legs. QS and PR, those segments aren't drawn in, but those are going to be our diagonals. We have PR over here, and then QS over here. So, like we said, those are the diagonals. And then angle Q and angle S, those are opposite angles. And then angle S and angle P, these are along that same base, so those are called base angles. I hope you got them correct. Here we're going to find the measures of the missing angles. So for this very first one, we have that the legs are congruent, so these are isosceles trapezoids. So that means that the base angles are going to be congruent. So the measure of angle B is going to be 53 degrees. Then we know that angle D and angle C are going to be the same because it's an isosceles trapezoid. So we just really need to find one of them. So to find it, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the parallel lines cut by this transversal. So 53 in this angle, those are consecutive interior angles and consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So 53 plus the measure of angle D is going to be equal to 180. So then we subtract 53 from both sides and we get that the measure of angle D is equal to 127 degrees. 
So that's the measure of angle D and the measure of angle C. So I want you to pause, try the second one, and then check back with me and see if you get the right answer. So hopefully you found that the measure of angle B was 108 and the measure of angle C and D were both 72 degrees. Now when we look at this last one, this is not, we don't have any indication that this is an isosceles trapezoid, especially because the legs are not congruent and the base angles are not congruent. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to split this into two different problems. This is a pair of consecutive interior angles right here. And then we have another pair of consecutive interior angles. So it's two different problems. So we have 91 plus the measure of angle D is equal to 180. And then a separate problem, 132 plus the measure of angle C equals 180. Now we have to solve them separately. And then when you subtract 91 from both sides, we get the measure of angle D is equal to 89 degrees. And then when you subtract 132 from both sides, you get the measure of angle C is equal to 48 degrees. So be careful when you have an isosceles triangle, ver I mean isosceles trapezoid versus just a regular trapezoid. Here we're going to use the mid-segment theorem to help us find the missing length. So first we're going to label, this is our x, and we said that if you take the top plus the bottom and divided by 2, that should give you our x, our mid-segment. So 7 plus 13 is 20, divided by 2, so we get x is equal to 10. So I want you to pause and try the same thing with this one. Don't be alarmed just because it's turned on the side. Try it, find x, and check back with me. Hopefully you found that x is equal to 20. If that's not what you got, Press pause, check your work with mine, and see where you might have made a mistake. Now let's take a look at this last one. In this last one, you're given the mid-segment and the bottom segment, and we actually need to look for the top. We're going to use the same formula, but when we set it up, we're just going to put the variable in a different place. We said the top plus the bottom divided by 2 is going to equal the mid-segment. So when we're solving for this, remember, if you need to, go ahead and put this over 1 and cross multiply, but you get x plus 12 is equal to 2 times 9, which is 18. Now we subtract 12 from both sides and you get x is equal to 6, and that's our final answer. Next we're going to talk about kites. A kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but the opposite sides are not congruent. So that we have two pairs of these sides next to each other. These are congruent, and then these are congruent, but we have to specify that the opposite sides are not congruent. These are not congruent to each other. If they were, then they, it would be a rhombus, and kites are different from rhombuses. Here are two theorems about kites. The first, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. So here we have AC is perpendicular to DB, and remember the definition of perpendicular means that they intersect to form a right angle. The second, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. You have exactly one pair. Now, the pair of angles that are congruent are the ones that are in between the different side lengths. So this one marked with one and that one marked with two, this angle and then this side marked with 1, that side marked with 2, this angle. Here we're going to find the measures of the missing angles. So in this very first one, like we said, here's the side marked with 1 and 2, so this angle is going to be congruent and opposite from the side marked with 1, marked with 2, this angle. So this is going to be 118 degrees. Now, these two are not going to be congruent. However, we learned before in day one that when you're finding the interior angle measures of any quadrilateral, you're going to use n minus 2 times 180 to give you that total. And I told you this is going to be one that you want to remember, 4 minus 2 times 180, any quadrilateral, four sides, the total interior angle measures is 360. So what we want to do with that 360 
is we want to take all of these angle measures, 118 plus 74 plus 118 plus the measure of angle K, the last one we're looking for, and that equals 360. Then we'll find 310 plus the measure of angle K equals 360. So when you subtract, the measure of angle K is equal to 50 degrees. And now we found all of our missing angle measures. So I want you to pause and then try the second one, find the missing angle measures the same way we did the first one, and then come back and check with me. Hopefully you found that the measure of angle K was 80 degrees and the measure of angle I was 124. If that's not what you got, pause, try to look at where you might have made a mistake and compare your work with mine. For this last one, we're going to do the same thing, find the missing angle measures, but we need to do this one a little differently. So we're given angle 27 and the measure of angle T, which is 74. Now those are opposite from each other, but they're not congruent. In order to find these two angles, we know that this angle between the side marked 1 and 2 and this angle between the side marked 1 and 2, those are congruent. So they still have to add up to 360, all four angles. So first, we're going to take 27 plus 74, and that gives us 101, these two added together. Take our total 360 and subtract the 101, and then we're left with 259. So when we subtract the two angles, we know angle A and angle H have to add up to 259. But the other thing we know is that A and H have to be exactly the same. So if we take 259 and divide it evenly in two, we're going to find that each angle measure is going to be 129.5 degrees. So that is going to be our answer for A and for H. Now in this one, we want to find the lengths of the missing sides. In order to do that, we need to use the property that the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. When those are perpendicular, that means that these are all right angles. So what we actually end up having are four small right triangles inside of here. Now, you already know from the definition of a kite that these two sides are going to be congruent, and then these two sides are going to be congruent. So you actually don't have to do four calculations, we only need to do two. So let's label this one x and this one x, since they're the same. We'll call this one y and that one y. So I want you to focus right here on this triangle. I'm going to redraw it out here, just a little bit bigger. That height right here is 2, this is 4, and this is our x that we're looking for. This goes back to unit 7 when we did the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to take 2 squared plus 4 squared is equal to x squared. Remember, the hypotenuse opposite the right angle is always c by itself. So then we have 4 plus 16 is equal to x squared. And then we have 20 is equal to x squared. Then when we take the square root of 20 equal to x, we need to rationalize or simplify this radical. So we actually end up with 2 times the square root of 5 equal to x. Now, if you need another lesson and refresher on simplifying radicals, make sure you stay after school or ask me during class. Now our second triangle is this one over here. So if we pull that out to the side, we have this right angle. This one is 2, this length is 6, and then this is going to be our y. So I want you to pause, solve for y on your own, and then check back with me. Now I hope you got y is equal to 2 times the square root of 10. Now just in case you need it, I did break this down again carefully so you can see how to simplify the square root of 40. That's all for today. Make sure that you know your properties and your theorems for trapezoids and kites, and I'll see you in class.